हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ माय चैनल आई एम किशोलॉय सुन मे लास्ट वीडियो आई हैव शेयर्ड दैट व्हाई डिड आई जॉइन एनी जॉब आफ्टर माय एम टेक एंड व्हाई डिड आई डिसाइड टू परस्यू पीएचडी फॉर माय फ्यूचर करियर एंड मेनी ऑफ यू हैव आस्क्ड मी टू शेयर व्हाट इज द यू नो एडमिशन प्रोसीजर फॉर पीएचडी इन डिफरेंट आईआईटीज एंड आईएससी एंड हाउ टिपिकली द इंटरव्यू हैपेंस हाउ डिफिकल्ट इट इज हाउ टफ इट इज टू क्रैक एंड you know share some tips so that they also can uh, you know appear for the interview and crack it and since the admission procedure is currently going on in different iits and iisc uh, for the for the upcoming semester that is uh, spring semester or uh, or typically we call it as a fall admission and the interview for the phd uh, admission in different iits will be happening in this month or maybe in the uh, next month uh, you know early phases of the next month so that's why i decide let's you know let's explain the whole procedure that how typically this admission procedures for phd happens in different iits and iisc so in this particular video i'll be sharing the details of the admission procedure like when when typically the forms are out when the notification is released then how you will be applying for 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 phd admission in different iits and iisc and then what are the procedures what are the cutoffs and then finally i'll give you some tips that what are the things that you should keep in mind when you will be appearing for the interview panel so everything i am going to discuss in this particular video in detail and this will be a generic video for all the departments and all the streams and all the research areas uh, that i am going to discuss in this particular video like the overall how is the admission procedure and what are the what are the different things interviewers used to look into a candidate that i am going to discuss in this particular video so please follow the video till end and before starting the video as i always say if you are new to this particular channel please do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly with a further ado let's get started into today's video now before starting today's video for your information i have appeared in almost all iits and iisc for my phd admission in machine learning and ai domain in 2021 fall and that experience i have shared in my channel uh, so there is a there is a playlist in this channel that is called phd interviews so you can go and check the videos there so all the videos are there and if you are someone who is who is interested in this domain like ai machine learning and you will be appearing in any iit is in this domain so these videos will be really helpful for you you will have a brief idea about the pattern of question these iit is you to ask in the interviews so i i will i'll strongly recommend you and encourage you so if you are someone who who is who is working in this domain you can go and visit that playlist so i'll be i'll be giving the link in the description or maybe it will come into the i button you can go and check it out now coming to the today's video uh, so the, so the first part of the admission procedure is the notification so typically these iits and iisc they release notification for phd admission two times yearly one is uh, for the spring semester that is the fall and another is the winter semester uh, that is during december now typically you know most of the candidates they choose during the spring semester only and very few students they they choose uh during during the december semester and for spring semester the notification will be released around after april i mean uh, after gate that is april or march end and in 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 the in, in the in the may or in, maybe in the june the interview will be going on or written test will be going on and for the for the winter session so typically like september october around that time the notification will be coming out and the interview happen like around november end and december first week so this is this is the typical time time periods when the notification will be come out and the interview will be going on now once the notification will come out so you have to you know uh, fill up the form and submit the application and once you submit your application then these organization will shortlist you based on some criteria now this criteria is not fixed different iits and iisc they have different criteria even across different departments like like if you if you apply for cds department and csa department in isc they have different criteria to shortlist you so based on different departments you are applying in a particular institution and across institutes also they have different criteria to shortlist you for the written test and and the interview and those criteria is mostly based on your cgpa and like like few iits are there who is very very flexible in the, in this term like they they just demand more than 65% uh, for the for the shortlisting criteria but there are some iits who has very strict criteria like they demand more than 8 or 8.5 cgpa 
uh, you know to shortlist different different uh, students like for me i can give you a personal experience like i never got a call from iit madras because their criteria is that you should have a more than 8.5 in your btec and mtech and unfortunately my btech score are not that good i mean in my btech my cgpa is less than 8.5 so that's why i never got a call from uh, iit madras and uh, and i never appeared for an interview there so that's why i'm saying that different institutions has different criteria based on that they used to shortlist students uh, for the written test and interview now once you are shortlisted by the institution so the selection procedure contain two rounds so the first round is the written test and if you can crack the written test then you will be you will be you will be appearing to a personal interview round and if you can clear the interview round then you are selected for the phd admission now first coming to the written test now written test is kind of a gate like exam where they will ask you for very fundamental basic questions from your stream from your subject and some aptitude question they will ask you and they, in this particular set of questions so a huge amount of question will come from the mathematics background because i think in almost all domain mathematics uh, you know plays a very crucial role in all domains of engineering so mathematics you have to prepare very well and the other subjects that is there in in your gate syllabus that you have to prepare so the typical duration of this written test is like 1 to 2 hours and if you if you if you prepare for the gate exam like the syllabus for the gate exam you will be easily able to crack this particular written test now once you clear the written test now you are eligible for the interview so you have to appear in front of a panel uh, for the technical interview or personal interview uh, so mostly it's a technical round where the interviewers will ask you lot of technical questions and you have to answer them now i'll give you a glimpse of how a technical round goes so that you will have a idea and you will you will get some get some you know understanding that how to appear for the for the interview how to be mentally prepared for the interview and i'll give you some tips also that so that you can you can, you can understand that how to crack these interviews so typically when you when you enter uh, for the interview so they will first ask you you know about yourself the basic questions like introduce yourself and they will ask you like from where you have done your btech mtech what was your mtech thesis and then if you have any industry experience so all of these things uh, uh you know a background of yourself though the people will ask you so i mean you might be thinking that they have already have the cv of yourself and you have already applied giving all the details in your application form but why they are asking you these things so that is just to make you much more comfortable in front of the panel because we all we all are human being and when you are appearing for such a great panel where a lot of researchers are you know all the iit professor and researchers are sitting so it's very common that you will be get nervous but that's why you know they will ask you this basic thing so that you know you will get accustomed with the environment and they will make the whole thing easier for you and then they will you know gradually jump to the technical round next they will ask you what are the domain uh, what is the domain you are interested to work uh, in your phd and what are the specific research problem that uh, you are interested so here you have to specify a particular domain and a particular problem that you are thinking to work uh, for for next couple of years so uh, so maybe you can you can say your mtech thesis that you have done and you want to extend that idea uh, in your phd uh, but you have to you have to properly justify whenever you are giving something as an answer like suppose you are saying that you are interested in ai and machine learning and you want to work in some kind of natural language processing or computer vision problem so you have to say that why you are interested in that particular a problem statement and also keep in mind that whatever problem statement you are saying uh, there might be there must be someone in that particular institution who is working in the same direction so suppose you say that i want to work in natural language processing so in that particular institution there must be some some professor who is working in natural language processing otherwise you know your your chance of getting selected will be very less because the panel will think that your interest doesn't you know kind of align towards any of the professor who is there in the in the institution or in the department so that's why you should do a proper survey of the of the different professors in that particular institutions on which areas they are working and based on that you have to prepare your answer like what are the areas or what are the sub domain you are interested in and what are the particular problem statement that you are looking for working you know next couple of years so it should not be like that just you have just appeared for the interview without any prior background 
study so if you just say that i am interested in suppose in cyber security and in some random question but maybe there is no one in that particular institution who is interested in this particular direction so please be careful that whatever problem statement you are saying and and please keep this in mind also that which are the professor you are thinking to work in that particular particular problem statement because they might ask you also that which are the professors you are thinking that as your as your potential guide of phd so then you will say that this particular professor i am thinking because i have seen his work he is also working in this particular direction so i think he will be a good fit for me and i will be good i will be a good fit for him as well so please keep this into your mind whenever you are appearing for the interview panel now coming to the actual interview so as i was saying so they will ask you different question from that particular problem statement that you are saying they might ask you some question from there also that why you are interested in this particular problem statement and they will check that whether you have the proper background knowledge to address that particular problem or not they they might ask you a few question from your uh, from your memtech thesis also like personally i have seen in few iits they ask for presentation of your memtech thesis so they are they will give you 5 to 10 minutes to present uh, this this memtech uh, thesis and they will ask you question from there also like if if you have a very good mtech thesis they will start asking you from from there only and then they will jump to the subject part i mean the basic fundamental questions from from your you know subject that you belong to suppose you are belong to computer science then they will ask you few question from computer science if you are belonging to some sub some other stream like ec mechanical they might ask you from there so now here is a thing that in iits or iisc what i have felt so whenever a professor is asking you something they expect you to think for that particular problem it's not like that they want your immediate answer from you so don't do this mistake so whenever a question is asked from a from from a interview panel by a interviewer so first of all it won't be a straight forward question mostly it will be a open ended problem or something that you you need a thought on it so it's not like they will ask you define something or what is this theorem or all that they won't ask they will give you a kind of a st problem statement which is difficult to solve and you have to solve it by parts so they wants you to think about it and then give the answer so if you jump to the answer immediately that this is the answer it shows that you are not thinking you are you know kind of reminding few stuff that you have studied maybe a couple of this back and you are trying to answer from there so that mugging up concept that is not not at all accepted in different in in all the iits so they expect you to think because as a part of research scholar in any phd program you are you you are supposed to solve a open ended problem so here it's not like that you study a, from a book you solve few questions and appear for the examination and, and 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 solve the question so it's not like that so you have to address few open problem where you have to think and solve the problem so that's why thinking is a big part of any any phd interview so whenever some some interviewer will ask you some question have a thought on it and then you know give the answer in parts i mean it's not like that you have to give the full solution but the way you are thinking you have to you know properly explain it to the interviewer like why you are thinking in this direction like you might be think you might be saying that i am thinking in this particular direction if you go if i i i i go with this approach it 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 might lead to the solution then he will ask you some counter question that why you are thinking and all so this is how the inter, you know whole the interview will be a discussion kind of thing rather than kind of one is asking a question and you are giving an answer so that is very crucial and this is something i have experienced uh, during my interviews also and after clearing my interview when i interacted with different professors in iits uh, i came to know about this that these are the things they used to look for because at the end of the day they don't want someone uh, who has a lot of knowledge or who can remember many things because as a part of phd scholar you need this kind of cognitive and uh, cognitive ability that you can think about that particular problem and you can come out with some solution uh initial solution which obviously you have to verify uh, after your experiment and all but this thinking power is very much very much needed so that's why you know whenever you are appearing for for the interview please keep this in mind don't jump into the solution think and try to give the solution one by one that i am thinking this way and they will uh, they will ask you some counter question and then you will think again so this is how you have to make it kind of a discussion rather than 
uh, one to one question answer uh, procedure also you should have a very good presentation skill uh, because whatever you are thinking that you should you know explain and present properly to the interviewer because if you can't present it to the interviewer he won't be able to understand what you are thinking and this presentation skill is very very much important and very much necessi necessary for your phd life because in your phd life you have to do a lot of meetings lot of presentations and lot of one to one discussion with your with your guide with the fellow uh, fellow students uh, you know with with your collaborator and everywhere you you know it's 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 very very necessary that you can present well uh, whatever you are thinking so that's why this skill is needed and this is something also they this uh, you know interview panel used to used to judge that whether you can explain whatever you're thinking properly or not because if you can't do that then you know it's very difficult for for the teach professors or the guide to continue with you for the next five years so that's why this is a very crucial thing that you can you can explain whatever you're thinking in a proper way so that the panel can understand your thought process and they can judge you based on your thinking yeah so this is the overall uh, idea or overall procedure for for the for the phd admission in different iits and isc so this is a generic uh, procedure that i said so uh, this is a generic procedure for all the streams so specific to any stream or any subdomain there might be some changes like for csc there is a coding round but uh, for for other department there won't be any coding round so there is specific to for some department there might be some changes here and there but on a on a on a high level this is this is the procedure for phd admission where you have to appear for the written test and if you can crack it you have to appear uh, for an interview and you have to follow these tips to crack the interview so that's it guys that's it about today's video so i hope you you like this video and this will be helpful for all the aspirants uh, who will be appearing for phd interviews in different iits and isc in the coming year so I, 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 I will request you to share this video to many other people so that they also get to know about it. And if you like this video, please like, hit the like button and subscribe my channel uh, if you haven't subscribed it so that you know you will get all the notifications regularly whenever I will upload, upload any, any video. So that's it guys. That's it about today's video. I will be meeting in the next video. Until then, bye.